Unfortunately, that Giants team uh, beat the Seahawks, and then now we, we are living with the uh, memory of a, a tail kicking at the hands of the Buffalo Bills. Mark, what is your – I don't know how much of that game you've had a chance to see or saw, but uh, what – I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out how what this team is, and I, I feel like I'm looking at a team that is what their record says they they are. To quote Bill Parcells, they're they're a mediocre team. They're just they're not overly talented. They don't have the they don't have enough talent to to overcome self inflicted wounds. They they can't they just can't make mistakes. They've got to play a really key, clean game in order to beat a good team. Uh, am I wrong about yeah. that? No, I think you're 100 percent right. I think the other thing is. You know, from just missed tackles and not getting off blocks. Like, that that to me, as I watch Seattle on the defensive side of the ball, that to me seems to be one of the biggest things that, that keeps kind of rearing its ugly head is, like, guys are getting on you and they're staying on you and you're not defending or defeating the block. You know, you've got to be able to, um, one, the game is, you know, the game is played with your hands, hands and feet, and you've got to be able to shock people. I always said when I was playing first contact wins. So the first guy who makes contact usually wins that battle. And then it's about, you know, it's about being physical at the point. But once you you physically, you stun the offensive lineman, then you extend you what we call stacking a guy. And then you, then you figure out where the ball is. Right. And it's almost like, they're trying to extend and and before they win that line of scrimmage and they're getting pushed and not getting off blocks and then missing, you know, they missed a bunch of tackles last, uh, last weekend that, that uh, you know, I went back and watched a bunch of the film. And so that was the things that, that just kind of jumped out at me, missed tackles and not being able to get off a block. And, and that, you know, I mean, Listen, there's nothing more humility. I get it when you give up a big play over the top and all that, but when they consistently are able to run the ball on you and control line of scrimmage on you and, and consistently being able to, you know, to, to throw it to the tight ends and things like that, that that's just really frustrating for a defense. Well, Mark, we were talking about, you know, I, I seriously doubt it's the scheme, right? Just because, you know, Mike McDonald yeah. runs runs a great defense. And then the, the other question becomes, okay, it, is there talent there? And then, you know, to me, I, I think it's, well, you have the scheme, but you're not able to coach it. You're not, you know, you're not, you got to get your guys playing all on the same page. But as far as the, the talent goes with, with guys like, you know, Boye Mafe and Derek Hall and, you know, the, the new linebacker, they got Ernest Jones, uh, Witherspoon. Do you think there's enough talent on this defense that, that they can be, you know, a top, a top 10 defense at some point? Or is that the problem? I think yeah, I, I think there's talent. I think it's a good point about, you know, about tying it all together and, you know, and, and being on the same page and, and being able to communicate to one another and all that kind of stuff, yes. And then sometimes, you know, I go back to McDonald back in, in, in Baltimore, man, and they were very multiple in what they did and the different ways they attacked people and, and different ways they created pass rush situations and all that stuff. So, you know, all that stuff is, is great. And I always say this about defense in general, disguise is really good until it's not. And what I mean by that is, is that you can put yourself in a position that's, you know, really sound, but it, it requires a little bit of thinking and a little bit of timing and being on the same page. And if any of those things is off, even a hair, then that's the difference between making a tackle for a two yard gain and having a 40 yard bust out. And so those little nuanced aspects, when you're putting in something new and you're having guys and everybody has to rely on one another. And, you know, it was, it was funny. I talked to Jordan Brooks this weekend in Miami and, you know, and I spoke with him for a while and sat down with him and talked to him and just asked about their scheme because they, they're really simulated pressure, a lot of different moving parts in Miami. They're pretty good defense. And um, just asking him kind of the difference between what he was in in Seattle on this. And he's just like, Seattle was under Pete was really basic stuff. Like we were just going to be, you know, play very, very vanilla stuff, but we're just going to execute it really well. He goes, this scheme 
like every one of the big plays we give up is because we're not on the same page and we have like and that's there's a learning process getting to know one another playing beside one another and kind of understanding if a guy's going to do something how I can you know I can freelance lance off of him or he freelances off of me or I cover for him and so there's a lot of that learning curve that goes on and I don't know that might be a part of what's happening in Seattle right now who who's the elite team in the NFC in your mind? Is it is it Detroit? I mean, Washington sitting there at six and two, you could say, all right, they got a bit lucky on that final play, but they're six and two. Uh, Falcons won again after the Seahawks beat them. They're five and three. I don't know who does anybody stand out to you as a as an elite team? Yeah, the, the I think the Lions are the best team in football. Um, and you know, I was I was uh, watching I was watching tape today and like. They're so they are so good. They are so tied together as an offense. And then, like I'm watching them in a three by one formation, and they run weak to the three wide receiver side. And um, you know, it's like a speed trip. So it's three wide receivers and a tight end on the backside, and all three of their wide receivers absolutely throttled. One a linebacker, one a safety, and one a corner. And they just, they absolutely throttled them. And, you know, it's like a eight yard gain to the sideline, but those dudes are nasty and are involved and have fun doing it. And it's like little things like that. You watch the way they play and, and people think, Oh, it's scheme. And Ben Johnson is so much better. And this, that, and no, no, not really. It's their guys are nasty, and their guys want to be involved, and their guys are unselfish, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to set up their partner. And, you know, it's like great basketball when there's assists and and a team is really great. It's like the Warriors back in the day or the Nuggets during their championship run where you get more excited about a great assist than you do about scoring a bucket. And – and that's what I watch with Detroit. Like it's it's phenomenal, and it's on both sides of the ball the way they play for one another. Um, so they're elite. I think Philadelphia, like right now, Jalen Hurts hasn't turned the ball over in four games. They got their weapons back on the outside. They're super super talented. Um, you know, top to bottom, front to back, they're a really talented group. So those two in the NFC are my are, are like probably my two best teams in the NFC right now.